Evangelism in the workplace. Well, evangelism is a big part of what we do here at Trinity Radio, and is a big part of what we do at Trinity College of the Bible and Theological Seminary. Uh, evangelism is kind of at the heart of everything that we do. Um, for Braxton Hunter and myself personally, uh, it's what we do in our degree programs. They're all geared towards sharing the gospel, ultimately. And Trinity Radio is all about sharing the gospel. So evangelism in the workplace, if you think about it, other than spending time with your family or asleep, workplace is where most people spend most of their time. So if you want to be evangelistic, um, you can be evangelistic in the workplace as well as uh, scheduling times for public evangelism outside of the workplace. I know that some friends of ours, they like to go down to the riverfront here in Evansville, for example, and do evangelism to, to the people out there uh, walking around. Um, but for those who, uh, you know, don't have so much of a social life or don't find themselves with the opportunity to evangelize, workplace evangelism is actually very important uh, in your evangelistic endeavors. So you spend a lot of your time there uh, at the workplace. So one of the things you want to make sure that you're doing is that you're being a good worker. Colossians 3, 23, in uh, your work, do it with all your heart as unto the Lord, not as if you're doing it for men. You want to be a good worker. You want to have a good reputation among your fellow employees. You want to have a good reputation with your employers. Um, if you don't, if you are a bad worker, chances are people aren't going to be interested in what you have to say about anything else because they're only interested in the fact that you are uh, a terrible employee. So make sure that you're one of the best, if not the best, employee at your place of employment so that you have that kind of respect among your co-workers. That goes a long way because remember, you are representing Jesus in the workplace. So that's number one. Um, but as far as engaging in, in, in workplace-type evangelism, a few points that I want to make about this. Um, different workplaces have different atmospheres. Some, some of those atmospheres are more receptive to uh, religious-type conversations. Some of them are more hostile. So you're going to have to use discernment there. Um, I've had several secular jobs, um, some in office settings like... Uh, I'm in now some at, at restaurants. Uh, for many years, I was a barber, as many of you know. And, of course, in the barber college, they tell you, uh, talk about anything you want, but uh, really don't ever talk about religion and politics. And then once you are in the barber shop, uh, most of what you talk about is religion and politics. And, of course, everyone has an opinion, and everyone's opinion is informed by their worldview. And so it's helpful to know something about worldview if you're going to engage in office uh, evangelism or workplace evangelism, regardless of your place of work. Now, most interactions in, uh, so my experience uh, as a barber, you have a shop atmosphere. You also have the one-on-one -on -one, uh, personal engagement with the person that's in your chair, and you have a back and forth with them. You have them a captive audience, so to speak. You have sharp objects in your hands, so they're going to pay attention to what you're saying uh, as much as pay attention to what you're doing. So different workplace environments have different kinds of uh, distractions going on. They have different types of, they have different types of settings. Uh, so the types of interactions you're going to have is going to be dependent, but most of them are going to be brief. Um, some exceptions to that might be uh, if your workplace, if you're opening a restaurant or closing a restaurant, for example, there are times where it's not very busy uh, or you're, you're, you're breaking down stuff and getting things prepared for the next day and cleaning up and things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of time there for personal interaction with your coworkers while you're doing uh, your evangelism opportunities there. But remember, um, as also having been an employer and uh, a manager of other employees, while I celebrate the, 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 the robust and great conversations that can happen among coworkers, if it interferes with getting the job done or, you know, waste more time on the clock because you're going slower because you're having a conversation or whatever, that also reflects bad. So uh, it all depends on your uh, workplace environment, uh, how long these conversations can be. But my suggestions for, for engaging in workplace evangelism is let the conversations of others guide 
how much evangelism you engage in. So whether it's pop culture or whether it's politics or whether it's religion or philosophy or whatever, conversations like those always come up and they people always speak uh, their opinions about all of those things, issues related to those t- subjects uh, based on their worldview. And your thoughts and opinions on those subjects should be shaped by your Christian worldview. So in any conversation, worldview comes into play. And when you give your opinions and your views on all of the topics under discussion, you can steer that towards why those views and those opinions are shaped by your worldview. And the reason why you have that worldview, of course, is because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead uh, so that you can be saved and so that they could be saved if they would believe. So all conversations will inevitably uh, engage various worldviews, and you can always share your worldview perspective and the basis for that worldview, uh, which is the gospel. So the gospel can inevitably come up in all of these conversations, but these conversations are going to be short and brief uh, for for a lot of the time. So the way that you want to do most of your workplace evangelism is outside of the workplace, uh, believe it or not. You need to build relationships with your coworkers, and if you want to evangelize them, you need to say, hey, After work sometime, why don't we go grab a bite to eat or go grab coffee or go go to a bar if you're not a teetotaler or things like that. There are places that you can go, settings outside of the workplace that you can have more in-depth conversations where actually if they're in a more personal setting outside of the workplace, that's where I say it's okay for the Christian to broach the conversations uh, from the, uh, as opposed to responding to conversations that you want to steer towards worldview, you can, uh, you can begin and initiate the conversations that start with, uh, Christianity as, uh, and the gospel as the topic of the conversation. Whereas I actually don't recommend you doing that sort of aggressive, uh, I call it, we say aggressive as that, that more, um, upfront gospel presentation in the workplace. Uh, have those conversations with coworkers outside, but in the workplace, always be uh, responding to the, to the conversations, not initiating the conversations in the office. Um, there's reasons for that. Uh, again, some uh, workplaces, some employers, uh, maybe more uh, other employees, maybe more hostile to, to the Christian worldview and those issues being discussed in our culture, some less so. But if you're outside of the workplace with your coworkers, um, that's off the clock. So you can, you can engage and initiate the conversations that you wish to have. But within the workplace, you're always responding and and, and participating in the conversations, giving your views and your opinions on whatever the subject matter is from the Christian worldview in which you can always sneak in, so to speak, uh, why you have that worldview because of the gospel and how uh, you're being sanctified and how God's word informs your views on these kinds of things. So uh, that's kind of, if we're going to use terms like offense and defense, uh, defensive evangelism, where you let them uh, come to you with the, t- the topics of conversation and you um, you express your side of the conversation from your biblical worldview and get to the gospel there. But outside of the workplace with your coworkers, if you've developed relationships with them, they actually want to spend time with you outside of the workplace, which is, again, goes back to having their respect and being likable and being a good employee. Then you're outside of the workplace. You can initiate the conversations that you wish to have with those people. And if you get into a conversation with them, uh, where you you're answering questions and you don't always know the answers to the questions. That's uh, where I want to refer you to what Braxton Hunter and I always talk about being answer finders, uh, not just answer givers, because you can give the answers that you know to give, but if you don't know the answer, say, I don't know, but I will go find out and we'll continue the conversation. So as far as workplace evangelism goes, I'm all for it. I just think that in our culture, you need to be wise about it. You need to use your discernment. You need to let the conversations uh, come to you to where you can put your two cents into the conversation from your Christian worldview and what the basis of that worldview is. Build relationships with your coworkers 
and engage them and initiate the conversations on the topics of, of Christianity, faith, and so forth outside of the workplace, uh, whether that's at a restaurant or coffee shop or whatever. So those are my thoughts on that. You should be doing workplace uh, evangelism. If you have any other comments, thoughts, or suggestions, or, or helpful hints uh, how to be effective in the workplace, put those in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And we thank you for watching Trinity Radio Extra.